You have another 300,000 that uh, you can draw upon, 500 of whom, about 500 of whom, uh, carry weapons. Uh, can you tell us who, who these people are? Uh, there probably are some people out there who complain about gang stalking and stuff like that. Okay, the fact of the matter is the police organized a uh, lynch mob on me, and I've been dealing with this experience for the past uh, couple of years now. Okay, six, seven years. Okay, it's been going on, and uh, basically what they do is they organize a street gang to follow you around. The police will work with them, coordinated with them, and what they had the gang do is harass you to the point where you respond violently. Okay, so that the police will jump in, they see you reacting violently, and they have a reason to shoot you. That's attempted murder. Okay, and you read about these cases all the time. Okay, uh, they tried it with me. And they've been trying to prompt a response out of me so they have a reason to, you know, to shoot me or lock me up for a very, very long time. It sounds like a horror movie. Innocent families terrorized in their own homes by a group of anonymous hackers. Yeah, this is an incredible story. Imagine somebody hearing everything that you say, seeing everything that you do, and using that information to threaten your children's lives. For three families in Washington State, this is no movie. It is a mm -hmm. campaign of technological terror they say is so real. Mm -hmm. It sent out text messages to about 25 contacts in her phone. She noticed her phone doing weird things, so she powered it down, and they powered it back on. And they were, we, we started getting phone calls too, restricted mm. phone calls. Get the f out. We will kill people at Curtis when you least expect. All your stupid f friends. And Curtis is the school. Yeah, we were sitting in our living room, and my husband ha was on his cell phone, and so the camera phone would have been facing the couch right. that I was sitting at with my two young children. My son was eating top ramen covered in a blanket. The noodles. Yeah. yeah. And um, they described the blanket my son was covered in. They said they wanted a bite of his top ramen, and they they said what. Um, See, it, it, Scare the heck they said out of the you. color of my daughter, my ten-year-old daughter's shirt, and it, they even said what it says, like a Roxy shirt, and told my husband to stop writing on the yellow legal pad. Mm. It, it, it makes me feel afraid. Lawrence Casino claims his neighbors are gang stalking him because he plays loud music late at night and is outspoken. He said for the last year and a half, he's been systematically followed by a group of people. At one point, he said they climbed on his roof to harass him. Gazzino said he's developed a paranoia that's devastated his relationships with friends and, worst of all, family. Cynthia Verbeff is moving. Her home, she says, has become a house of horrors. I feel that I've lost my mind. I've lost my life. Incident reports from law enforcement tell the tale. Numerous break-ins at the address. Vandalism to her car, her motorcycle, her computer. Verbeff believes she's being targeted. Everything. They just went through everything. Lights left on, doors open, furniture moved, her clothes dryer disassembled. Her friends say they noticed the strange happenings. They tell the I-team they even witnessed a gas oven left turned on. As soon as you walk in the house, you'd smell gas in the house. So the whole house smelled from gas. So immediately turned it off and opened up the doors. But I mean, that thing doesn't just turn on by itself. I and mean, it had been running for a good length of time. Or the time Verbeff and a friend say they were stalked at a mall. I saw him following us to several stores. And I was sitting there close to us, looking at us. The girls had the presence of mind to snap a photo with their phone. Verbeff says all these happenings culminated in an assault. The 39-year-old believes someone drugged the food in her home and returned later to rape her. I know something happened to me because a woman knows. My name is Lisa, and I'm, I'm just, I don't really know what to do. I'm coming on YouTube because I need people to know what's going on with me. And I need for other people out there to know that you're not alone and that you're not going crazy and that your family is turning on you and that the people you love will turn on you. Everyone you know will turn on you. I've been going through, I've been the victim of, a, I'm a targeted individual for two years and thought I was going crazy. I begged my friends, you know, I didn't understand why people were turning on me. I've aged about... 20 years. I have no home to go to. I have no hope in humanity. So, my name is Rachel Orban and I am an organized stalking target. 
I'm coming to you from Boston, Massachusetts, my hometown, and I'm sorry to be coming to you looking so haggard and ungroomed and just terrible and tired and bloated. <laughs> but this is what being targeted does to you, and this is the result of having to fight every day, all the time, for your life and your sanity, and nobody cares, or nobody understands, or they're told to not believe you and you're crazy. This is what happens. You get old, you get bloated, you get tired. I was a beautiful girl when this whole thing started, and now, well, you see. My name is Helen Anderson. I live in Alexandria, Virginia. I'm a victim of electronic harassment. I want to tell you how I was selected as a targeted individual. My uncle, Colonel Benjamin Leach, USAF, was stationed in San Antonio, Texas at the time the Nazi scientists were brought to the U.S. by President Harry F. Truman. My uncle objected to the Manhattan Project. Uh, therefore, uh, his family uh, was selected for experimentation. Hi, my name is Brenda Barraquo. I'm an electronic harassment and surveillance targeted individual. The entire family of four are overt targets of gang stalking and microwave attacks. Joint Terrorism Task Force Division of the FBI sent two agents out to my house to visit me. I'm a part-time peace activist, a full-time mom of five kids, and a part-time registered nurse. These two agents knocked on my door. They verified their identities with me, and they also verified my identity. At that point, I shut my door, went inside, and grabbed my video camera this is what followed when I opened my door. Danger. Go ahead and show me your badge, okay?